using the AutoPro 300 with in situ probe acquisition and deposition, starting with loading the sample. The sample is loaded in the instrument cassette in the sample holder. In this particular example, the sample is fairly large and the stub is placed away from the grid holder area and the cassette for the tips. Step two is to put a grid onto the sample holder. The grid is fairly fragile and somewhat vulnerable when it's on the sample holder, so using a vacuum wand, an individual grid is picked up and the O of the Omniprobe logo is running from my left to my right. And that's the orientation we want to have on the grid with the sample holder in this orientation. When we attach the sample to the grid, the sample holder will be tilted with everything else away from the pole pieces um, and the step of the grid facing the fib. Next, we bring this close to the sample holder. We loosen the screw here. And drop the grid in the slot. There are two slots in this particular sample holder. It doesn't really matter which one. Okay, the grid is now sitting <coughs> In the slot, next step is to make sure that the grid is well positioned. I need to tighten down the holding piece. The third step is to acquire a tip or two. The cassette goes in this position here, and there's two slots for tips, position one and position two. This we call the pickup tool. It's a gripper with a handle. Uh, the end is identical to what's in the instrument, the gripper end of the probe. In order to pick up a tip, we line up the pickup tool with the shank of the tip, leave a few millimeters space, pick up the tip. We then place the pickup tool. There are four positions on this block. There's end of travel on one end, then there's a notched position for shank two, there's a notched position for shank one, and end of travel in the other direction. So we're going to go to notch for position shank 1 and we're going to manipulate the tip right over the cassette, push down into the channel of the cassette and pull back fast. That loads a tip in the cassette. In this example, I'm going to load two tips to have a redundancy. I always start with position 2, and I inspect the tip of position 2. If that tip is good, then I go ahead and acquire it, and position 1 is not used. I return that back to the original box. If the tip on, in position 2 is damaged, and I inspect that, then I have the tip in position 1, although I cannot inspect it. To handle the cassette, there is a uh, knurled rod that is screwed in to one end of the cassette. And that allows us to handle the cassette with the tips and, and not damage the tips. They need to be uh, very well centered in, this, in the channel of the shank and the collar needs to be against the adhesive that keeps the whole tip in place. At this stage, I like to inspect the position of the tips, and if needed, 
I will push back on the collar to make sure that it is firmly attached to the adhesive. So this stage is done under a stereoscope. I go in in front of the collar and I push back to make sure that it's sticking well to the adhesive. And now the two tips are are perfectly centered in the in their respective positions. We are ready now to put the cassette in the sample holder. There is a bracket to hold the cassette and <clears throat> there's a notch on this end. The notch goes in first at the bottom there and the front piece goes down. There is very little friction at this stage because the tightening screw is loose. The tightening screw, the set screw, can be set tight, then you would not have to make this next adjustment. But for ease of loading it, uh, we like to tighten the screw afterwards. And we tighten the set screw. So now the cassette is in place and tightened down. The grid is in place and the sample is in place and this is ready to go in the instrument. Now that the sample holder is loaded with the sample, the two tips in the cassette and the grid, we will place the sample holder in the load lock. Caution here, these tips are fragile, the grid is fragile so the finger should never run against the grid area or the tip area. The sample holder is loaded in the load lock and we now close the door gently so as not to shake the tips out of the cassette. We're now ready to load everything into the system. We go to the uh, stage points list on the Zeiss software, the SmartSim, and we should have programmed two positions, shank 1 and shank 2, the dollar sign indicating global, the administrator created these, and we will start with shank 2 because that position is inspectable. So double click this, and now the stage is moving to the pre-programmed position for shank 2. We just saw shank 1 go by. There's the end of, that's the um, tapered end of shank in position 2. Now we want to center the tapered end of the shank in X and Y using the SEM view. So we're going to use the centering function to center the middle of the tapered end to the center of the screen. Next we're going to set the height of the shank by switching to the fit view, setting the same center of the tapered end to the center of the fit view, but this time using only Z. We will not use the centering function of the tool and we are going to only use microscope stage Z moves up or down. So I'm going to move the stage up to move the image down to center the end of the shank. So right now the shank is centered in height using Z in the fib view. Switch back to the SEM and it still is centered in the SEM view. And this is now our new position for shank 2. It's a very good practice right now to edit this. Um, so the stored shank 2 location was very slightly off. I'm going to create a new shank 2 position. Again, a global one. I have administrator privileges, shank 2. I'm going to overwrite the old one. And now we have this location stored for this particular shank. At this stage I'm going to inspect the tip just to make sure that 
the tip was not damaged, I moved purely an X and you can see the end of the tip there. To acquire a tip, we click on one of the shank positions. And, shank two. and yeah, I like to start with shank two. So we're going to double click that and then we go to shank two. We have positioned the shank in the sem view and the fib view. We'll double check that. There's the fib view, it's centered, sem view centered, and now we're going to run the acquisition process. So we go to the auto probe software and under the probe tip exchange menu, we select acquire tip. <coughs> the uh, software will ask for the angle of the probe with respect to the stage of the microscope. In this particular configuration, we have a 45 degree angle. We double click that and the software will ask whether we are a novice or an expert. For the training purposes, we'll pick the novice. So it's going to go step by step for everything we need to do. It says to acquire a probe tip, press OK. We press OK. It says please retract the auto probe and press OK. If we look at the interface here, we see that the green insert button is showing, which means that the probe is retracted. So the probe, auto probe is retracted. We click OK. Now the software is prompting us to center the end of the shank and electron beam using only stage X and Y moves on the microscope. We already did this, so we click OK. It asks us to center the end of the shank and the ion beam using only the stage Z moves of the microscope. We've already done this, so we click OK. Now it asks to check the shank in both beams and press OK. Again, we've done this. It asks us to save or record the current position so that we can deposit the tip. We've done this already. OK, now it asks us to insert the autoprobe and click OK when the probe is inserted. So in the control window of the autoprobe, go to the program location of Gripper. Uh, first, we want to insert the probe. And next, we want to go to the gripper eucentric high position. If we look in the SEM view, the gripper appear on the left-hand side of the screen for this configuration. There's the gripper on the left-hand side of the screen. The gripper is the same as on the pickup tool. It has a, a slit in the middle. It's like a jaw. And it has a... It's Rotate it correctly so that the FIB has a view into the opening of the gripper. And the SEM view has a, an angled view into the opening of the gripper. We have reached the tip eucentric high position. Now we want to move the gripper into the tapered end. Actually, in the novice position, it will move to the gripper, which we've already done. And now the autoprobe software uh, is asking us to position the gripper in X and Y on the SEM view. At this stage, we can move in port Z down. Now, if you look in the SEM, you will see the gripper approach the end of the shank. And at the same time, it's moving down, so we get a double motion, and I will stop there. We s then switch back to stage coordinates in X only, and come up against the end of the shank. We want to make sure that the gripper 
is centered about the center of the shank. So I'm going to measure the y distance from the center here. We have 526 there. So now we have about 515 on this side and a little bit less here. So we'll move up a tiny bit. And now <coughs> the gripper is centered about the y-axis and move in x, height about half of the taper. And now we're going to switch to the fib view. And here we can get a height perspective. So again, the fib view is inverted, so we need to center the gripper about the shank. And then we move x in. And now we need to check the position in X and Y. So right now the gripper is completely <coughs> covering the tapered end of the, of the shank. So that's as far as we want to go. We now check the switch to the fib. So we're ready to acquire the tip. So we click OK here. Um, the instructions ask us to use the iron beam to set the height, which we already did. Click OK. It asks us to check the alignment in both views. We've done that. Double check that the position was stored. So we click OK. And this process is automatic. So uh, a good way to observe this is to use a side camera we have here. Um, and we can see that the gripper is moving in the channel, we have contact, the gripper is going to move out, so the gripper is coming out of the cassette with the tip acquired. The acquisition process is almost completed. Um, for safety, once this has retracted to the eccentric point, I will lower the stage so that this, the microscope stage is completely out of the way. So the, right now the stage is out of the way. Switching to SEM view, another camera view. We should see the, the tip appear from the top of the screen. It will go to the last program, the centric high position. Uh, the AutoPro software is asking us right now to, um, to align the tip with the center of the screen in the E-beam using the X and, X and Y in the AutoPro, and then it will ask us to align it in the ion image in Z. So we use the AutoPro software to um, position the needle to the center of the screen. So we move the auto probe to bring the, um, the needle to the center. About 2000x magnification. Um, and there we are. You notice that the tip is a little bit out of focus. I'm not concerned about that yet because we haven't set the height. So to set the height, um, we will switch to the ion beam view. So we switch to ion beam view and you can see that it's not at the center. So we go up in Z, we go down in the view. And again, we want to do this at a magnification of about 2000x. And um, I want to line it up with the horizontal. And then I'm going to move x. So right now, um, the ion view, the ion beam view, is showing us a centered tip. 
we switch back to the SEM view and we see some X offset. This is um, a coincidence offset in this instrument. Uh, we don't want to physically adjust this. I'm going to shift the SEM image to the right. Now we are at the correct height, so I do want to focus on this tip. Centered in the X and Y using the SEM view. We check the FIB view. And that's centered. So the next uh, step, now that we've acquired a tip, uh, is to uh, check the grid that we put in. And if we have that in the right position, then it'll be easier when we acquire the sample and lift it out of the out of the bulk material to immediately go to the grid position. So we're going to double check that the grid is placed uh, in its uh, clamped position at eccentric end coincidence. And there is the um, fifth view of the grid and it's pretty close to the center of the screen. You look at the send view uh, and that's also pretty close. And I'm going to check the fifth view. So that's a little bit off. I'm going to make a coincidence adjustment. Um, so the two are at coincidence now. I'm going to switch back to the sim and I'm going to tilt to see if we are at eccentric. And if the grid is loaded correctly, uh, this the stored position will be very close to coincidence and eccentric, as you can see. And that is the case here. There's very little adjustment, if any, to make for coincidence or eccentric. So once we've acquired our sample and placed it on the grid, we can now return the tip to the cassette. We go to the stage points list and um, click on shank 2, which is where we acquired this from. And we go to the SEM view. You can see the empty cassette for position 2 come into focus. So we should be back in the position at which we acquired the tip. And now on the AutoProbe software, we select Crow Tip Exchange Deposit Tip. On this pop-up window, we follow the instructions to deposit the tip, press OK. Please retract the AutoProbe. We look at the um, button here, it's green, so that's means it's retracted. We click OK again. And now uh, it's, it asks us to move the microscope to the stage position that we saved, which we've already done. We click OK. Uh, it asks us to insert the autoprobe. So we insert the autoprobe, and after we insert it, we'll see the tip come up on the SEM view in the screen. And that's about the right place for it. Um, it's good to run a quick check of whether things are where you expect them to be. So the empty cassette should be placed in this location and the tip should come in about that far. We click OK and now the rest is automatic. The probe is moving first in X, which is in this, it's Y for this direction, X for the probe itself. It's moving out of the cassette then it's going to move down, and the best way to look at this is from the side camera. The tip is there, the collar is there, the shank is there, the gripper is there. The whole assembly is moving towards us, out of the page, to clear the cassette. So right now the gripper with the tip is moving down in Z, that's port Z, and you can see that it's lining up with the channel in the cassette, and then it will stop when the collar is about there. If something goes wrong here, it's usually pretty obvious. We hit the emergency stop and we can 
usually recover without damaging any hardware. Um, but if the position was stored correctly and returned to correctly, then there should be no problem with this process. We're now at the correct Z position, and we move in the opposite Z to go in uh, X to go into the cassette. So right now the whole assembly is going into the cassette, and it will get a little darker because it's going to be shadowed, and everything is lining up well. So the color has just gotten dark, the gripper end is getting dark. And there it is, we are making contact, that's good. And now it's going to pull back. And in a few seconds the tip will separate, the gripper will separate from the tip and the alarm will go off. There. Still slightly connected. There it is. It's fully separated. And um, we are done. The gripper is empty. The tip is in the cassette. The whole assembly is going to be unloaded.